it's June 1st, and this is, of course, the video log. It takes 30,000 to a million, and I talk a bunch of uh, crap along the way, and I share my account thoroughly with you. So uh, this is no edits, just free flow talking here and just laying out my thoughts for you. So just sit back, don't rush, get a drink. I'm drinking some actually right now. I, I made myself some coffee, actually tea, and I, I like to drink it with half and half. So I don't know why. It just tastes so much better. Everything tastes better with half and half or even cream, like heavy cream. But anyway, so I'm uh, after I share the account with you, I'm going to talk about cash flow. And I don't mean cash flow in like the academic version, although that is, uh, well, that's money flow. But same thing. Um, I mean it in the sense of how much money is actually going into the stock markets over a certain period of time. So I'm going to have that breakdown for you. I actually did some homework before I filmed this video today. So, But before I do all that, uh, what I'm going to do is I will show you thoroughly the account and where I'm sitting at today after today's action, which was a bit negative. So I'm sitting at $176,000 at the moment. I almost climbed back to green territory towards the end of the day, but then there's, there was also there was a little bit of a sell-off. Uh, if you want to know the exact positions, they're listed on the right. I will go through them really quickly so you can pause your video player at any moment to try to find out the exact position. The numbers on the right are just the daily change in dollars and in percentage terms. You can click pause anytime to try to view what's going on here. Some of the changes from yesterday are the addition, or I should say subtraction, of two Goldman Sachs puts. Um, so I'm just gonna jump straight to the to that action to show you. So during the lows of the day, actually, somewhere around here, 9 a.m., 9 something, 9.30 a.m. or something like that, I decided that Goldman Sachs had dropped enough. I talked about that yesterday, that it was just too high for me, and it's not worth selling those uh, puts. But it had dropped enough to where I could pick up uh, 310 puts for like, I don't know, 150 each. Something like that. And uh, I sold them and I'm already up 170 bucks on that position, 55%. Um, just just within today. Uh, that wasn't the peak, by the way. It was a bit higher. We'll see how the next two days goes, but I'm betting that I might actually clear this week. I don't think that Goldman Sachs is going to drop below 310. In fact, I'm kind of looking for a little bit of a continuation on this bull run over the next couple of days. But of course, I may be wrong. If Since we don't have reversal Tuesdays, have a reversal Wednesday, I guess, this week, since Monday was not a market day. Either way... I have raised enough cash to do that, so I pulled off the stunt, I sold off a couple of puts, and now my cash has decreased, but that's okay. This is the investing tab if you're interested. It will show that my margin is still 18.66 because the puts, I'm holding some of that margin as collateral, so it'll be somewhere around here, you know, it'll be almost 45% maybe by the time... I end up executing that trade if it does execute. If you're interested in the positions by total return, of course, this data is kind of skewed because of options. This is it. And if you're interested by size, this is the size. So moving on from that, show the account, show the profile. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think this pain is is not going to be as much as some may speculate. Um, although the market dynamics are a little bit weird, okay? So you could have, you know, 3 billion people trading, but all it takes is just one somewhat prolonged period of time where there are just no buyers at the table sitting down and a bunch of sellers and that could drop the markets like many 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 percentages almost in an instant um so well pretty much in an instant so markets are a really weird thing buyers and sellers especially have to be present basically at all times and participate in the market because that's what sets the market price 
Now, if the market, if the price drops too low, buyers will in, uh, invariably come in and um, vice versa, especially in liquid markets. So liquid markets just means that there are many market participants in that specific playing ground. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is the fact that uh, I don't think that this pain could persist for way too long because of a function that I like to call, you know, money flow. Although, like I mentioned, that's not, I don't mean the, the definition of money flow, which is this, okay? So it's calculated by averaging the high, low, and closing prices and multiplying by the daily volume. So um, you can tell whether cash the money flow is positive or negative on the day and people use it kind of as an indication of where they think the market's going on the following day or just overall. So it is used by traders all the time, um, but we can argue about the reliability of such metrics. But what I'm more interested in is this kind of money flow here. You see what this says? The average 401k contribution rates by age. So you can see that Americans contribute about 10% of their salary, working Americans on average. Uh, and we want to deal with averages, not means, when we're doing this type of calculations. So t let's take that 10% and I'll show you what I mean. 10% and then we're gonna what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the median individual income is in the United States of America. Uh, actually, I need average income. I did this up wrong. I think average income is probably around 60. Let me let me type that in Google real quick. My bad. <laughs> Doing this on the fly here. Average income of Americans. So this is median. I want average. Where's the average? All right, average is 79,900. So I have to uh, basically double my homework calculations here. All right, I'll, I'll do it by seven, okay? So, multiply by seven. You see what I mean? All right, so we take the population, I'm sorry, we take the, uh, we take the population and then we'll find out what percentage of them are actually working, which says right here, percentage of people employed places within the United States of America. And that's about 48% of Americans are employed. So 48% of 329, which is the population of the United States, equals to about 157,920 people that are employed. So since we're dealing with averages, um, we're going to take now the average salary of these all these people which we determine is $79,000 which seems kind of high but you got to remember that it's really skewed and in fact I should probably use a lower number because the people higher up they don't contribute 10% of their income in 401k right they're um, most of their wealth is like tied up in stocks and stuff and so they're actually probably even drawing down from their retirements but so let's actually just stick with the original figures and discount all that. Uh, if you want to try just to figure that side of the equation, you can just multiply 31,000 by like two and a half or something and get closer to the realistic figure. In, fa in fact, I might just do that. I'll multiply it by two or two and a half. So anyways, we take that population that's working and we take 10% of that, right? And we get, in my calculations, uh, $3,100 per month being contributed to 401k. Or if you want to use the other calculation, it would be, I guess, 7900 But let's stick with the 3100 right now. Now, 3100 per person, multiply that by the working population, and you get a number that's $473 billion. Or if you want to multiply by 2.5, it's over a trillion dollars. And that trillion dollars is coming into the markets buying stocks every month right every single month there is this money coming in that's coming through salary through the through the these companies or government and being paid out to people and they're just bidding up prices constantly 
every month by like either from anywhere from half a trillion to a trillion plus. So this is the kind of money flow that I'm talking about. And it's really hard tidal wave to battle against. Like if you're a money manager, if you're a portfolio manager, even if you're holding, you know, if you're managing half a bill, I'm um, sorry, um, half a trillion or trillion and you sell out your entire um, portfolio in a month, which would be a very, very difficult task to do which nobody does that manages money at that level, then you're still going to get counter. You're going to get buyers um, that will actually stand on the other side just by passive investment and soak up all of that dump business slash any kind of securities that you know you want to sell. So the buying pressure in the market, in my opinion, is just unbelievable. Yes, there are other factors I didn't talk about. Like, for example, retired people, how they're drawing down on their funds and the boomer generation is pretty large. But the boomer is actually, believe it or not, they're not larger than the millennials. Millennial generation is bigger and Gen Z is bigger than, well, Gen Z is a non-factor right now. But um, millennials as a age group are actually bigger than the boomers. So even if you imagine, which is not the case, but even if you imagine that all the boomers are withdrawing, right they're net withdrawing in fact that would be an interesting thing to look up if the boomers are net negative or net positive for the price action sell sell by pressure on the uh in the market but i would probably think there's still more buyers than sellers even at the boomers uh boomer level especially even if you think about the some of the poor ones who are working in their retirement age right now trying to make ends meet, like they're not really drawing on 401ks, like they don't have 401ks, right? And if you think about the poor ones, uh, maybe just just the medium um, wealthy boomers are drawing down. I think the wealthier ones, they have so much cash that they're, they don't, I mean, assets, so many assets that they don't really need to draw down on 401k. They're just kind of maybe shifting it from 401k to a regular individual investment account or something like that. But either way, what I mean to say is that um, the inflows are huge. I guess we can call them inflows. Inflows are huge. Like you can't be battling with a trillion dollars each month. It's really, really tough. So all the selling is done by active managers, right? I mean, maybe some of it's algorithmic and stuff like that, but all these are just a bunch of funds, hedge funds, portfolio managers, financial advisors, stuff like that. Funds that are selling um, and raising cash in the process, mind you, right? They're raising cash in the process. Uh, and all that cash is going to actually have to come back into the market at some point. They're going to have to rebalance, right? Which means buy equities that they didn't sell last time or buy something similar they sold last time. Like one, com one hedge fund might sell Exxon and buy Chevron a month later or something or... The, the, the next hedge fund might sell Chevron by Exxon. So they kind of cancel each other out for the most part. But that money is going to come back in. I read an article uh, just today, or at least a headline, that cash positions have never been higher in managed accounts. So this cash is going to get distributed, and you bet yourself that that was not an expression, was it? You bet your ass? We bet your ass they'll, they'll buy equities with it. <laughs> so um, at least with a big portion of it. Um, or, or bonds. I mean, the yield's fairly attractive right now, which is another topic that relates to uh, inflows, okay? I'm going to call it inflows. I think that's more investment lingo correct. Uh, bond yields are higher, okay? So normally you think like, okay, that's that's net negative but think about all these people that rely on bond income all that money that they get from these bonds like retired people we just talked about the boomers all that money is going to go back into the economy right now they have more money to spend so they're going to go out and buy those strawberries or whatever they buy and bid up prices and uh, maybe buy some clothes or whatever it is and that money is going to go into the corporate eventually even if it goes into small business, businesses, small business owners, they buy corporate products. So all that money is going to end up in the stock market to goose earnings anyways, which in turns is probably going to set higher 
uh, ask price, right? And I'm sorry, higher, yeah, ask. And um, the price will go up. Excuse me for the earthquake. Uh, prices will go up. So I don't know when. Obviously, there's more at play, right? Like, for example, you know, central bank play is very important. Um, you know, they they were withdrawing liquidity and and um, selling some assets and therefore putting downward pressure on the markets and whatnot. But that that's not gonna last for for too long. Uh, I think that just the sheer amount of people are investing each month is gonna keep prices fairly elevated. Now I might eat my own words. You know, obviously uh, markets could drop very low. But I think that a bear market like we're having right now that's very prolonged makes this event, I think, less and less and less likely. Like, I think the longer this slow bear market manifests itself, the less chance for a big crash uh, we have. Like, if this lasts for a, longer than a year, which has already been like half a year, I think the chances of a big crash are slim. Um, I think maybe there'll be like some kind of, there could be some kind of uh, small technical crash. But I think based on Fed, um, Federal Reserve and those organizations' ability to clean up the messes afterwards, I think it's going to be short-lived. And in fact, I think even prevented. Um, so that's really my only point. Is like It's so hard to fight this money flow that uh, it's, it's really dangerous to be a bear. Like back even just 20, 30, 40 years ago, the inflows were not nearly as big, especially as a percentage, right? Not many people had all these retirement accounts and everything. So the active traders, active investors could have a much bigger say as to what's happening to the overall market and price levels. But nowadays, I think uh, if you're a bear for too long, I, I think that you're on the wrong side of the equation. And that's probably an unpopular opinion, but... Those are my thoughts. All right, I've made this video long enough. I'm going to end it right here. Hopefully, I make another video tomorrow. And I hope you guys made more money than I did today. I lost the market, I think, by a little bit. All right, peace out.